Let me tell a tale of a world where heroes walk among us, fighting through the darkness left by monsters and by selfish men. A tale of glory rents us under sacrifice and battles lost. Our heroes know not what awaits them and still they carry Hello, everyone, and we are Ages of Vinor, and my name is Pixel, and welcome to the 13th episode of Ages of Vinor Presents The Regent of Bedegar. We are back once again with our bevy of Bedegarian adventurers, and we're super excited for this next episode of our campaign. I will be your dungeon master this evening, uh, and you can find this adventure and the supplemental rules that we've been using. Uh, in the D&D 5e supplement Kingdoms and Warfare by MCDM, uh, which is a follow-up to their first book, Strongholds and Followers, and a follow-up to the adventure in that book, uh, The Seeds of Castle Rend. Uh, anyway, as always, we're going to jump into the game here in just a few minutes, but before we do, we're going to go over those usual housekeeping things, but because we are lucky number 13 episodes in, I'm going to keep it extra brief just in case anyone's new. So, uh, dear friends, when you see map screens... Please try to remember that you are seeing the DM perspective. So you are going to be seeing things that our players can't see. You're also going to be seeing me uh, slightly uh, moving around this box because it was the wrong size. Okay. Anyway, uh, so you're going to be seeing map screens, DM stuff. Uh, so you may see things the players don't see, like monsters that haven't shown up yet, or secret doors, or all those kinds of stuff. Uh, try not to talk about that stuff in chat, because the players will be in chat with you. Second, don't freak out about rules. If you know a lot about D&D, and we're screwing things up, um, tough. <laughs> and try not to yell at us about it, we probably don't care. Um, if we're trying to remember how a role works, we're like, oh, how does mounted combat work? Uh, and you know um, the answer to the question that we are asking, uh, feel free to throw that in chat. But uh, if we don't see it and the moment passes, hey, uh, we're not going to go back and change things. Don't lose your mind about it. We are just going to try to get it right next time. Uh, third, this is an opening and welcoming space to the extent that that's possible on the Internet. So we do try to keep that Internet toxicity nonsense out of here. Um, never usually a problem with you guys. You're amazing. But we do always want to be upfront that we don't put up with people being abusive or hateful in chat, whether that's to viewers um, or to... Uh, the players regarding anything like their knowledge of the game or the rules, character choices that they make that maybe you don't agree with, or frankly, uh, anything else about them as people or whatever. Uh, Y'all are always great, but we do like to give that heads up ahead of time. And a final reminder, we do release the show on YouTube and as a podcast after each episode during the following week. So if you miss an episode or part of an episode, or you just want to get caught up on all the adventures, if you're new and you're like, this is cool and fun, well, you know, where's all the rest of it? Because uh, we're dropped into the 13 episodes <laughs> of, a, of a campaign here. Uh, you can go catch all that on our YouTube, um, which should be linked in chat. Hang on. Let's just make sure you guys have access to that. Boom. There we go. Oh, one of them didn't go. All right. Well, anyway, uh, so you have access to those things. Oh, it's Rob Socials now. That's why. There we go. Anyway, so uh, you can check out all of those things on our YouTube. And, of course, last thing before we get started, uh, I'd like us to go around and cast. If you'd please introduce yourselves and your characters and remind us whether or not you have chat inspiration, which chat, uh, if you have channel points to spend on inspiration, uh, those inspiration points are denoted by the little white D20s, which I control uh, with my little thing over here. You can see them flashing on and off. Um, so that is how we denote who has inspiration. So hopefully you don't accidentally give it to somebody who already has it. So let's start with the one and only bonus mom. Ba, ba, da, ba. 
Hey kiddos, this is Bonus Mom, and tonight I will be playing Perdita, the tabaxi rogue. We are getting very close to the big battle where we are going to put Edmund Bedegar back on the throne where he belongs. And, well, I'm so glad that you're here tonight. I do not have any chat inspiration, but I am bravely salarying forth anyway. Excellent. And uh, Kyla? Hey everybody, I'm Kyla. Uh, tonight I'll be playing Chanterelle, who is our uh, druid and bard in the party. And I do have chat inspiration, so I'm uh, just excited. Yep, I remembered. And excited to be playing with my pals. And this is Pinky. Hello, Pinky. Pinky She's a star. Hi. She, um, she is that. <laughs> All right, Daniel. Hey guys, I'm Daniel. I'm playing your fightness, fightness paladin Solomon. We'll see if I can smite someone today, just for you, chat. Smite, 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 smite. smite, 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 smite. smite. Okay, great. Uh, and does does the smitenest fightness paladin have inspiration? Uh, they do not. Okay. Uh, beast. What's up, folks? I'm Beast. Uh, I'm playing uh, Roz Hiskers, the Tabaxi Valor Bard. So great for you to join us. I am fully inspired. Huzzah! Jesse! Hey, uh, I am Jesse, and I am extremely tired from playing Tears of the Kingdom all night long last night. But um, I will be here making Christmas puns in June all day. Uh, in chat, so you can read those at your will. And yeah, I play Silas, the wizard. Um, I am currently uh, fully inspired. So put those points with somebody else. And uh, yeah, happy to be back. Excellent. And uh, Taylor. Hi, I'm Taylor. Um, I'm exhausted because I took a fat nap before <laughs> coming here. Um, so I'm a little sleepy today, but it's okay. Happy Pride! Yay. I don't have any sound alerts to play for that. I was born this way. Okay. Anyway, uh, I play Anna, the what if cleric. Um. So yeah, I don't have any chat inspiration, but it's, it's all good. All right. Thanks. Bye. Huzzah! And I am Pixel. I will be your Gungeon Daster. Wait, your Mungeon Gat Dungeon Master. That's the one. I will, it's on my hat. Shit, I gotta read. I will be your 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 Dungeon Master this evening, <laughs> and um, uh, and most other of the times that we play here at Ages of Vinor. Um, I GM uh, our current uh, slew of shows. We have Region of Bedagar, which you have found. Congratulations. Um, and bonus mom is giving inspiration to who, who? <laughs> apparently Solomon to Solomon. Solomon. Oh, well, I see be who, who wait, he who waits, but it went wrong. Oh, somewhere. okay. Understood. Whoo. All right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I GM the games here at Ages of Vinor. Uh, we have region of Pedagar, which is our sort of like, political and armies clashing and all this stuff going on. We're using the supplemental rules from kingdoms and warfare and strongholds of followers, lots of fun stuff going on. Um, and then I also, uh, DM our other campaign, which happens on alternate Fridays. So next week will be, uh, the other campaign, which is curse of Strahd, which we do with our good friend, uh, Vincent page, who I'm sure all of, you know, uh, if you don't, he's in our friends list. Uh, you can check him out along with a bunch of other people. Um, and um, we are alternating these every week. And then we are maybe talking about some other things we're going to be adding into our repertoire. We're talking about warfare streams. There's maybe another campaign with some other friends that we're talking about. So we're growing the channel. Lots of fun things happening. But we're super excited that you guys are here for us now. Uh, you can also find me here doing my other stuff on Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammer and pixel, where I stream video games, did a lot of Minecraft lately. Um, so that's been a lot of fun on the Bonus Moms Tavern slash AOA uh, Discord that we have um, in our Minecraft realm. So uh, that is me and what I do around here. So that being said, without further ado, when last we left our heroes, our heroes had raided the Star Chamber 
Slain Sir Anglum, the tier knight of the Knights of Three Roses, destroyed the strange brain-devouring aberration which sprung forth from his skull, and then began to investigate the facility. Discovering intel about Lord Saxton's plan of attack for the final battle, fought a room full of mimics, got some loot, negotiated with Galrathok, the interdimensional Langasino with a mind full of secrets, freed him to wreak havoc on his captors, and then jumped through the strange starry void at the end of the Star Chamber. They were pulled and squeezed through a strange dimensional space and thrown out into the open night at the Goldstone near Castle Wren, very much to theirs and Celebane, Shanty's druid mentor they had previously met at that location's surprise. After another short conversation and some speculation about the reason as to why the Void would have thrown them out there, they returned to Castle Wren. During the final organization turn, the, the Court of Wren mustered two units of levies using the funds from the goblets they stole from the Mimic Room in the Star Chamber, and, thanks to previous turns, these levies feature heavy equipment, which drastically increases their power and toughness far beyond what levies would normally possess. As all of Bedegar mobilizes for war, our heroes began to plan their strategy for the final attack on Gravisford and gear up for their final expedition to the Woad of the Orchid Court. Perdita spoke with Lord Edmund after training one day and made him promise that he would flee and save himself if the worst should come to pass in the battles ahead. Silas approached the spy and rogue Tubuckle and asked him to track down Ithranel Lucan, the elf assassin who slew his mentor Elian in the Great Woad many years ago and north of the Barony of Dalrath. Tubuckle agreed on the condition that once they return Edmund to the seat of the Barony that the detente between the seat and the clock be reinstated along the old, unspoken agreements they had before Saxon took over. He asked for this as payment not only for the intelligence gathering he was embarking on to find this assassin, but also for the intelligence and aid rendered to the Court of Rend and Edmund's cause by the clock. Silas agreed to this. Silas also publicly apologized for his actions in the torture of the spy, Alice Weimark, and asked his advisors what was to be done with her. Solomon recommended exile, and Silas and the rest of the court agreed. She was to be taken to the edge of Bedegar with some supplies, and released, never to return on pain of execution. Shanty spoke to Silas after the apology and commended him for us, and Enna shared her fears about the upcoming expedition to the Woad of the Orchid Court and the possible confrontation with whoever it was who had killed her parents, information that she had received from the interdimensional Langasino Galrathok, uh, so many years ago, and Twilight attempted to reassure Enna and convince her to allow her friends to aid her in her confrontation with the killer, and asked her to please make sure to return from the expedition. Then Orin and Solomon had a very strange confrontation, con uh, very strange discussion about gear maintenance and how to tear up a stump with a hammer and the effects of a diet on, of wolf meat on toe direction, before Orin asked Solomon if he planned to remain in Bedegar after the confrontation with Saxton. Solomon affirmed that he would honor his oath to the Count and swing his sword to protect the people of Bedegar. And we therefore resume our tale as our heroes make their final preparations to set out to the woad of the Orchid Court. Bum bum! I thought, you know, hey, what if, like, the announcer from DBZ did our intro? And that was my impression of that. And it was Take lovely. inspiration, Pixel. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Um, I think I forgot to ask this. Anna, you don't have inspiration, do you? No. no. Okay, great. All right. Well, folks, um, well, that now, is where I, we kind I of I gave begin. some to Solomon. You did give some to I missed that. Okay, thank you. And Solomon gave me a hit die, and I got four temporary hit points. Thank you, Solomon. Okay. And did anyone give... Um, no, no one gave Perdita inspiration. Okay, great. All right, so that is where we resume our uh, little story here. Um, you guys are at the final opportunity to uh, prepare for this expedition. Uh, let's head over to the map so everyone uh, at home can kind of see what we're talking about. You will be making your way, excuse me, making your way from... Well, Bedegar to Gravisford and then cutting around and going to the Woad Jeez, of beast. the Orchid Court. Which I think I put on the GM level, didn't I? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. So, um. Okay. 
So, um, that is where they will be headed on their next leg of their adventure. Thank you, Synapsis. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, what, what does anyone want to do or say? Any final things that need to happen here at the castle? Or are you guys just ready to set off on the next leg of your adventure? Let's go on an adventure. Okay. Uh, what I'm Let's hearing is you guys are ready to set out. On. These guys are having too much fun in the Roll20 chat. <laughs> we really are. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, you begin and set out. You pass through Gravesford, uh, which is a small town on the river just north of Rend. Uh, the forest where your castle lies, uh, you see that the town is bustling with the preparations for war. Several of the smaller um, buildings in the town have been converted into additional blacksmiths as, uh, I think his name is Yago the Smith. Um, where is this guy? Yeah, as uh, I guess it's Jago, Yago, I don't know how you pronounce that. J-A-G-O. Uh, that guy is sort of overseeing a group of sort of, uh, you know, trainee blacksmiths as they hammer heavy metal into um, rough heavy equipment for the levees. Um, and everyone is sort of abuzz with this mobilization. Uh, you, however, have important things to attend to with your business as these levees are mustered. You set out and travel north along the road. Um, edging around Bedegar Keep, avoiding Lord Saxton's uh, patrols, and reaching the woad of the Orchid Court. You uh, travel into these deep woods. After two days of journeying through these woods, you descend into a forested valley. The air is chilly and crisp. The trees have wild, wide, gnarled trunks and intertwining limbs in this wild area of the Woad. How do you, uh, how do you go about traveling? Like, what is your attitude? How are you moving? What's, uh, what are you guys doing as these first two days pass, uh, where you sort of are investigating and looking for, uh, these elves? Are we on foot or on horseback? Um, I think the woods are probably a little too gr overgrown. Like, there's there's very little... There might be, like, game trails, but there's not roads here, right? That is famously something the elves don't use. Like, they use, like, game trails and pathways, but nothing that would be wide enough and trod well enough to be a road. Um, and so I don't think horses would be able to pass here. Oh, well, I feel like Perdita would be using all of her stealth and survival roles as we journey in there to uh, to see what is ahead of them and try to discern what might be a path or a clue to a path as they journey forward. So she probably is fairly close to the front. Okay. And uh, Perdita, you have inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, uh, so you are trying to find these folks. What about everybody else? Uh, Perdita says she's kind of up in the front and keeping an eye out for the elves. Uh, how is everyone else traveling? Solomon will be in the bag that cover the rear. Okay. Roz uh, would like to climb up into the tree uh, canopy and attempt to navigate sort of limb to limb to see if from a higher vantage point uh, she can see anything that they can from the ground. Okay. Uh, Shanty will be, I don't know, I guess kind of up front, you know, close to everybody, walking on foot. And, uh, just trying to see if there's anything that she's picking up. 
tracks wise or anything like that. Okay. Um, I, what I think Silas on? is um, taking Inna and Shanti's lead. Um, Inna, um, as she herself is a wood elf, so she might kind of understand how they might move in the forest and then Shanti for her connection to nature and stuff. So I think Silas is kind of out of his element uh, being a, a, a math guy. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, and what about Enna? Yeah, I would assume she's probably near the front with Perdita, just keeping an eye out to see other, to try to find other elves. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, um, Who, what, I, what I would like then to start with is what is everybody's passive perception score? That should be on like the left side of your sheet under the stat blocks or under the ability score box. Kind of. It's going to be like 10. I am a fat 10. Okay. Elditas is 17. Oh, and shit. Did, uh, did Anna see that she has inspiration now? Yeah, yes, I did. All right. Uh, where do we find the? Uh, um, it's uh, under your skills. It says passive wisdom and in parentheses perception, right above uh, your tools. Seventeen. Solomon has a ten. Uh, Shanty has an eighteen. God dang, guys! <clears throat> we got a lot of whiz characters. Roz has a twelve. A lot of whiz. <laughs> Auto wisdom based characters. Okay, so actually, Shanty, you are the first to see yes. the elves hidden amongst the trees. They are clad in armor fashioned to look like leaves. Their dark bows are drawn, and arrows are pointed in your direction. Okay, I think I'll just do the classic. You know, put our put my hands up and say hello. We are friends. We are coming in peace, and just kind of like hold my hand out to the rest of the party and try to get everyone to stop. And hopefully, like, mimic the same action if possible. Solomon speaks up in Elvish and says, We do not come to cause any harm. We only wish to parlay. <clears throat> does does Roz, uh, uh, with a perception of 12 how does how does she handle this does i guess is she just taking the lead of everyone else or does yeah, she so, like bump into these things sh well shanty noticed them um and after being addressed they sort of like shift and move they don't fully come out of the trees but you can sort of see um them shifting around and i think two of them do sort of uh like show themselves um uh one individual is a quite pale skinned elf with uh red hair um clad in um uh, not not really much armor um uh who steps forward and then there is someone who looks to be probably the leader of the group um uh, and the two of them step forward together. Oh, you guys are at home are not seeing these folks. Let me... Uh, so this is the leader of the group. Uh, he steps forward. He has sort of like dark skin, long pointy ears, uh, and a uh, a big-ass sword. <laughs> very, very much in the vein of Solomon's type of weapon, a uh, greatsword. Um, they have their weapons drawn, but they don't seem to be like immediately attacking you. Uh, the other individual who popped out uh, is wielding a staff. Um... And the, uh, um, man, uh, approaches, uh, and you said you are here to parlay, and, uh, what, so what all, so just up to this point, who has said what, just so we know. So Solomon said that, uh, we're not here for conflict. We've come to parlay, and he says it in Elvish. Okay. Uh, Shanti has spoken in common and says that you know we're 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 here in peace, essentially peaceful meeting. 
Eldita actually was almost down on all fours as she was walking along the path with her nose close to the ground as she was smelling. When she senses and sees the presence of them, she snaps back and actually sits with her uh, hands in front of her, sort of on her haunches, much as a cat would do in the window seal. And she just holds herself very still and tries to look uh, not menacing. Um, so, um, yeah, the man steps forward and says, uh, again, weapons are still sort of drawn, and but not attacking yet, uh, and he says, I am Thalys, Knight of the Orchid Court. Our patrol has been watching you for several hours. Why have you come here? Solomon speaks up again. Is he speaking in common or in Elvish? Um, looking at this group of people, uh, you spoke to him in Elvish. He sees an elf. I think he's speaking in Elvish. Okay, Solomon says in Elvish, We are here but to simply ask if you may aid us in our endeavors and Solomon feels or fills him in on the situation at Bedegar or Gravesford I should say okay uh, does anyone else who understands Elvish uh, say anything else before I uh, have you make some rolls yeah Roz uh is going to hop down from the tree and uh, land on all fours and uh, kind of um, curl up, maybe somewhat inappropriately next to Perdita, like not with the gravity of the situation. Uh, and, and say in Elvish, uh, yes, we have come because as humans are wont to do, they like to bring their troubles into the affairs of others. If you could simply assist us, we can make the humans play nice with one another so that they do not invade your humble forest. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask, f at the mention of the humans invading the forest, I'm going to ask for a persuasion check from either you or Solomon with disadvantage. Because they do not like the that idea at all. And I know you're saying you want to stop that from happening, but that, that is definitely kind of a hot-button concept for them. Uh, so I'm a they burn. immediately all tense up. I'm a burn chat inspiration to get rid of the advantage or disadvantage. Okay. All yeah. right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. Twenty six eight bet. So um, they uh, that individual uh, Thalus narrows his eyes uh, and turns to the other one, and they sort of speak uh, quietly for a moment. Um, you guys are close enough to to catch the drift of it. Uh, he also uh, addresses her by name, which is uh, Ainuin. Um, and they confer shortly, and he turns and says, I will take you to our leaders. Come. Uh, and turns and begins to walk into the woods. Uh, the bows are sort of like, uh, the arrows are, you know, the, the tension is released from the strings. They return the arrows uh, to their quivers. Uh, but they do keep an eye on you as they move through the Sol uh, forest. Solomon's going to follow him. I think Perdita will continue to lope along on all fours. Okay. Just kind of trying to be, you know, like nondescript and yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so Solomon and Perdita are following. Is that what everyone's doing? <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, so the elves move swiftly. They are leading you through these winding uh, game trails and these paths uh, deeper into the valley. As you go deeper, the trees get bigger. Uh, colossal trees, 100 feet wide and taller than any tower in Bedegar, stretch up into a brilliant canopy. Uh, the leaves are um, just wild with color, uh, from sort of shimmering emerald to deep amber. Uh, it's still summer, but, you know, some of the leaves, it's like, seem naturally to just be different colors. Um, in defiance of the season, orchids and flowering vines wrap around the trees. It, the You know, you would know that, like, there is a sort of, like, freshness to the flowering of these uh, vines and leaves here that is... It should have kind of worn off by now, right? It's like midsummer at this point, late approaching late summer, um, as this uh, campaign is sort of beginning. Uh, the air is fresh, and you can faintly hear this sort of like melodic song floating through the air, uh, as if it is always just kind of around the next tree, a soft and uh, floating chorus singing gently and hauntingly. And, uh, do you hear this song? The song of the forest. It is like a whisper to me. But perhaps your ears are better than mine. Did you say no. that to me? Oh, she said to Shant, excuse me. No, no, Raz, I hear it. And I, I don't know, I feel like Shanty would try to like, just kind of be not even noticing that she's doing it, but kind of almost like humming to herself and picking out like little harmonies in the Song of the Forest. Yeah, and the uh, this tune is sort of um, accompanied and, and sort of woven in and around the sounds of the forest, uh, the calls of countless birds, the whirring of insects, the slight like whistle of the wind through the trees, but you get the sense that, like, it's more than that. It's not just the sound of nature, that there's something else kind of bringing that song to life. Uh, you see these kind of moss-covered pathways which lead, as you approach fully now, to the elven uh, territory, up to these wooden ramps uh, shaped into the trees, uh, branches woven together carefully over... Um, I think what Enna would recognize from her home, they, you know, it's a bit of a different style. It's a different area. The trees here are a different, you know, species of tree and things like that. But you're familiar with this where, like, rather than cutting lumber, they've, like, shaped the trees with, you know, magic and, like, tying things into, like, winding these branches together to form pathways and bridges and ramps uh, that are kind of winding upwards and intricately carved and sculpted uh, into the trees themselves. Uh, you can even see like homes, you know, some of which are um, cut into, you know, I mean, these are like 100 foot tall trees. So some of the branches are so massive that like the knot holes where the branch, when a branch falls, leaves, you know, quite a sizable, you know, cavern in some of these trees and they've sort of like taken these and made homes out of them much like birds do um and everywhere you see uh tall elves um with various different uh sort of mixtures of uh kind of like skin tone and hair color um even into like some of them blend in with the forest itself um you know there are some that have mottled skin like like tree bark and some that are even like green and kind of uh you know look like light coming through leaves and all sorts of different things um as you move through many of these elves pause as they see you um surprised to see visitors here uh, and whisper to one another um, as you approach a large circular platform amongst the branches between three enormous oaks, uh, Thalys points to it. 
and says, You are not a welcome sight in our world, but I will take you up there where you may meet with the Orchid Court. Uh, and he gestures you to a uh, circular wooden platform that kind of has like a crossbar above it. Uh, but you, as you look at it, you don't really see any like mechanism that, that is going to lift this thing. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a basket, kind of, but like, and it has this this crossbar, but there's no like you don't see vines or or, uh, or rope or anything like that. Um, what would you like to do? Solomon's gonna step on it in good faith. Yeah. Ross will yeah, do the same. Follow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anna's very enchanted by the trees and the other elves, so she's kind of in her own world right now. So yeah, she kind of think... passes. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. She just kind of passes by other elves and is like, "Hi, hi." It just kind of like kind of says a few things here and there because she's so just like, whoa. Yeah. Have you been in a place like this since you left mm-hmm. your home? No. Okay. So, yeah. And, and you get like a lot of like they're surprised to see everyone. But when you kind of speak to and address people, you get a lot of like raised eyebrows. Like, like we don't recognize you, but what are you doing with these What's this about? You know, like you get a lot of just like questioning, uh, but not like long conversations. Just people are sort of like scratching their head and have like their eyebrow raised at you. It's Pride Month. What can I say? <laughs> um, uh, but does everyone step onto the uh, to whatever this contraption is? Uh, Perdita leaps on there like a cat. And uh, as you all leap on and Thalys sort of like shuts a kind of door, this thing almost looks a little bit like a large oblong uh, hot air balloon basket kind of looking thing, you know? So he shuts like a little door in the thing and the buzz that you have been hearing for some time grows louder uh, and kind of deeper uh, as this mass, these two massive dragonflies approach uh, and for a second you don't begin to think of anything until they get actually close enough to understand the perspective here um, that these things are about the size of horses and they grab onto the basket and so you're now like whoop, whoop, like there's this wind whoop, 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 a little bit as you are being lifted up to this higher platform by uh, enormous dragonflies uh, bringing you up to this large circular dais where you see uh, a council of 12 noble looking wood elves who uh, are sort of coming in. Some of them are approaching and sitting down. Some appear to have been here for a while. And uh, the basket is set down and Thales, uh the knight opens up the uh, door uh, gesturing for you all to exit and sort of approach kind of the center of this circular uh, platform. Solomon's going to do that. Yep, Shanty will follow. Same. Uh, Roz will uh, sidle up to Solomon uh, and in common. um, Solomon, as we both can speak and interpret Elvish, we should look to our comrades, understand Make sure that they know what's going on. It is our duty to be the representatives to this court. That's understood, Russ. Very well. And, um, Thales sort of approaches and says, Honored Council, we found these interlopers traveling in the wood. They, unlike many other outsiders, were not harming the forest or the wildlife. Uh, So curious more than anything, we approached them and they stated that they wished to beseech us. So we have brought them here. Uh, And then he sort of steps out of the way, 
uh, and gestures to you as the council does as well, sort of like uh, indicating that you should speak. Solomon, may I introduce you? Go right ahead. Honored council, and this this is will be in Elvish. Um, honored council, we are pleased to grace uh, to be graced by your attention. May I introduce to you from the court of Rand, the first knight and marshal, Solomon. And uh, take bardic inspiration. So as uh, Solomon steps forward, he, uh, I don't know quite if the culture's the same from the Southern Wode or if it's like, I don't know if the Southern Wode culture's the same as the Northern Wode, but he's going to give a good greeting gesture that they would use in that Southern Wode. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, what I think I want to do here is have you all, uh, basically as you approach and you sort of begin this, uh, you, you read on these elves, they are very stoic. They're not showing much emotion or response to anything that you're doing at this point. Um, so I'm going to have you guys like make your case however you want to make it, right? Um, and then we're going to talk about how they respond and role play that part but like you know rather than like every little time we do something kind of seeing how it's impacting uh they are just like the wider crowd may respond a little bit to the things that you do but this group of leaders is just like absolutely not giving you anything <laughs> right like no it's very it's actually like and, and i think maybe you make that gesture expecting to see some recognition or some like being impressed or something and it, I think it's. it doesn't even take an insight check to figure out that they are very intentionally not giving you anything to work with. Um, like, they kind of just want to see what you're going to do, basically. Um, so you make this gesture, which, you know, and I think even as you make it, you may hear a murmur from, like, the other folks. Because a small crowd has gathered around the edges of this sort of place to watch these proceedings. Um, and there may be some recognition and some acknowledgement from them, but from the leaders, it's just like brick walling you. Right. <clears throat> um, and so I think maybe you're, it's up to you how you feel about that happening, but that, it, that happens. And then you respond to it. However you, uh, think if that makes sense. So, uh, you've made this gesture, you get nothing back. And, uh, and then what Solomon speaks up and says, I am Solomon. The hand of Rand recently appointed, and I have come here, and he says it in Elvish, and I have come here to ask of aid. The tyrannical usurper is attempting uh, <laughs> but we have a tyrannical usurper on our hands. And we're trying to restore the balance of Rind. And we need your aid. Does anyone else in the party speak Elvish? I do. Or would anyone like to make a statement that Roz or someone else can translate on your behalf? Perdita might at some point, but not now. She is just uh, observing the room. Yeah, so you finish your speech, yeah. Solomon, uh, and they seem to be continuing to just regard all of you. None of them yet make a motion to respond. Um, I don't know how long you guys let any silence go on. Um, I don't know if you want to try to, like... Probably not long. Yeah. No, it's up to you. You could you you basically have two options here, right? Wait them out and see who, who who gives first and says something, or continue to try to say things. So it's like I don't know what your strategy is as a group, but that's their response. So Solomon, you give that speech, uh, and they just continue to just sort of like stare you guys down, um, and I'll leave it up to all of you how you respond to that. 
Um, Silas will also step forward um, and say, I am Silas Blackhand, uh, Count of Castle Rend. Um, I know we are unwelcome. Unwelcomeness is a familiar feeling for many of us. However, this is not a time to enact, act upon our differences, but to uh, cherish our similarities. We are both under threat of Lord Saxton and the uh, Kingdom of Bedegar, you being their neighbors most of all. We fear that what is emerging um, there may be from a plane unlike our own, and it may unfortunately spread. We have evidence that Saxton, his knights, and maybe many of their people are not what they appear to be. And we need to put a stop to this before it infects us and perhaps your woad. Um, I'll put a hand on Solomon and say, um, I have trust in the people that I have, but I want very much for them to survive. And um, we believe that with your help and with the help of the surrounding nations, such as Dalrath, which has come to our side, as well as the Elgin Whites of the Elgin Woad, that we can overcome this terrible infestation. We ask for your help, not for our sake, but for everyone's. Thank you for seeing us like this. I know it's unopportune. Um, and I'll clap Solomon on the shoulder, hopefully giving him advantage, and take a step back. Solomon's probably going to stand there and wait them out. If that's the case, I think Roz might speak up before not too long. I think that the bet is that uh, Perdita is also going to read the room and possibly step forward in turn. Uh, would Perdita like to uh, speak her piece first? Not necessarily. Okay. Well, so Roz will uh, step forward and... Uh, uh, oh, what Perdita is going to do is uh, is going to slide over to Silas and speak to him in a very quiet tone while you are speaking. So Roz is going to uh, recite an elvish poem about two trees which grow tall because of the space between them they are allowed to flourish. But that during a storm, one of those trees, which is not properly cared for, may fall and damage the other. It's the space between those two beautiful, strong trees that allowed them to grow tall and strong with firm roots. Uh, and uh, this... Uh, hoping that this poetic analogy of the woad and the kingdom of Bedegar as the two trees uh, would persuade them. Uh, Silas, I'm sending you a message in our chat. <clears throat> yeah, they continue to uh, wait and see. Seeing that there is still very little response, Perdita is going to step forward for the first time, and she is going to look at the leader and make eyes with the people at the table, and she is going to say, I am Perdita. I bring you greetings from Edmund of Bedegar, who was not killed in the recent murder of the Bettegar family, 
and to show that we come as his representative. Silas? Silas is muted. My fault. Um, Silas will draw slowly and present his blade with the Bedegar crest. We represent Bedegar. Now I know that you are not interested in what happens in the human world particularly, but you live very close to Bedegar, and I know because I knew Elster Bettegar and the family for many years, that they did not intrude upon you or bother you in any way, but had the utmost respect and admiration for you. I cannot guarantee that Lord Saxton, who is not a lord at all, will give you any respect or kindness or will leave you alone. He is a murderous bastard. And he would like nothing better than to destroy everything that you had. I bring promises from Edmund that when he has returned to the throne, he will leave things as they have always been, and he will always have the utmost respect for you, whether or not you aid us in this endeavor. But if you will aid us, it would be for your own good as well as ours. Thank you, honorable persons, for listening to me. And Perdita will bow deeply and step back. I think Shanti will step forward. And uh, I do not speak Elvish, so if someone would be able to translate for her, that would be oh. fantastic. And Perdita said that in common. Perfect. Um, but Shanti will step forward and say, hello, um, my name is Shanti. I am a, a s former student of, of Celebane. And uh, I'd just like to say that though I am new in this land, in my short time here, I have witnessed horrible atrocities against not only townspeople and my friends, but nature and a abominations to our realm alike at the hands of Lord Saxton. I truly don't think that if we all don't take action against him, as my friends have said, I don't think any of us are safe. And I think that we have significant evidence to that fact. And we just come humbly asking for your help. I think she'll kind of like bow a little bit and step back. Anna enters the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Anna's gonna step forward and she's gonna uh, bow and she's gonna say, um, I must say thank you for allowing us to enter into your magnificent forest. Uh, for it has been years since I have, um, uh, it has been years since I've been back in my own forest, and I must say I do miss it greatly and deeply. It is truly just phenomenal. And you must wonder, what is an elf like me with a group of like them? <laughs> group of cats and a blue what girl. What did she say? It, it, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, Eli. Oh. And a human. But... I will say they do speak the truth. Uh, there's a great evil upon us and we are hoping to stop it for the sake of us and for everybody around us who are close. <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm trying to form my words. 
I know this is a I know this is a lot to ask of you, but maybe we can negotiate and do something uh do a favor in return um for providing for us a service for i for i am great greatly thankful to feast my eyes upon such a great forest i have a tree friend okay what was the name of that tree that i bought it with i can't remember he was like the, the big and, tree it, tr we call him trent what do we call him hang on allies and retainers Trang triangle Triangle, okay. Triangle I have Latrian. a friend. I have a friend. He is a magnificent tree. Triangle the... You said Triant? Triant? Triant, yeah. Triant. Triangle the Triant. Maybe you have spoke with him. Maybe you have not. But he has helped us um, battle these evil forces. So maybe if you know my friend, maybe, maybe you can speak with him as well. He is a good friend of mine. And I'm a friend of the forest and I'm a friend of your people so please uh, any help would be greatly appreciative thank you again and she bows and just like backs up <clears throat> um yeah so uh, a moment passes after you've all spoken and um one of the elves, uh, a woman, she has stark white hair and green eyes and is armored much like the uh, man who brought you in, although she wields a much smaller sword, um, begins to speak. Let's show her to everyone at home. Um, and she says, My name is Falriel. I sense no passion for a true fight from you. I do not sense the courage and heart of your ancestors. You are frail, sniveling, and spineless. Why should, we, why should we send our warriors to die in the aid of those so pitiful? Solomon's going to step forward and he puts his hand on his sword and he says then shall I prove to you the might of Rend then she scoffs this, at this you is, this is just Taylor thinking out loud but I kind of want to be like yeah that's why we need your help yeah <laughs> if we weren't so puny I think we would be okay but, and it's not gonna say that. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking out loud. It just popped into my head. I thought That's it was not a bad way to go. I mean, <clears throat> so she says. So we have uh, a, a, a challenge, a, a duel between our champion and theirs, or beg. Are those our options? You know? I think in response to the uh, to the challenge, Falriel says. It is not the strength of your arms that I question. But what good is a blade swung by a mighty arm if the heart behind it is weak and frail? Oof. Ah, so it's character you call in the question. I find that crossing blades <laughs> allows you to learn about an individual more than what just looking at them does. And to be fair, you scoffed at my challenge, even though you issued it. What does that say about you? Um, uh, Ross, Ross is going to uh, sort of turn to Silas. My count... Do you give your permission for Solomon to challenge? Hmm. The hand of Ren doles justice where he sees fit. He needs no permission from me. And so be it. One of the others uh, pipes up. Um, 
a um, older male elf. Um, age in elves is hard to determine, uh, but you can see just a faint bit of gray beginning to sort of um, happen at the roots of this individual's hair, despite the fact that the, the skin is still quite, um, you know, it's not like wrinkle like humans would be. Uh, but they're just very faint signs of age. Uh, and he speaks up. You have spoken well of the needs of the human realm, but I am unmoved. It has been only a few centuries since our last alliance, one which your people broke. Why should we repeat the errors of our past? Um, can I get a history check to get some insight into what he's talking about? Sure. You know what? I'd like to do that. 26. All right. 26. Okay. Oh, Perdita got a five. Um, yeah. So, um, you think that uh, what he is discussing has to do with... Uh, let's take a quick trip to the bigger duchy map. You think that what he is talking about has to do with um, the area that is northwest of Bedegar, and which is... Uh, we're going to... Right, so uh, where are you guys? You guys are here in the Wood of the Orchid Court. Uh, and you can see this massive, and, and you would know the history of this on that 26. There's a massive area uh, to the west and northwest of that kind of borders Bedegar um, called the Gray Waste. And several centuries ago, it was part of a woad. You actually, at looking at this map, you guys can kind of see the woad of the Orchid Court is like tiny compared to like the Elgin Woad over here, which is massive. Um, the Great Woad to the north, which extends farther off that map, is like huge. Um, the Bayo Woad down in the south is much bigger. It's like all these other areas, you know, are much, much bigger uh, woads, right? Uh, and I think your study with Elian would have taught you about the Grey Waste, um, wherein the Orchid Court, when the humans first arrived in Bedegar and the surrounding areas, um, they kind of had alliances, um, and they often aided each other uh, and shared responsibilities for taking care of the land and things like that. And then um, the humans uh, at that time basically kind of got into a power struggle amongst themselves, and one group of them um, really fucked up that whole uh, huge ass area of the map uh, with some like nasty necromancy and druid shit. Um, and then later on, there the ruins of the floating pyramid. Later on, there it, it played a role in uh, the war that happened in Bedegar, um, which was part of a larger kingdom. Uh, you can see over here, there's the ruins of Castle Omend. That's where Good King Omend used to live. Uh, he w That was where the, the um, near the Mere Mountains on the in the east. And um, he was the one who had the Dragon Knights of Good King Omend who kind of kept the peace of the land. But then the one of the lieutenants of the Dragon Knights betrayed him to uh, Ajax the Invincible. This is all kind of stuff Silas would know about. Uh, and there was a floating pyramid, which was... Uh, sort of created by the wizard um ajax's wizard uh and was destroyed in the in the fight even though um, ajax and his folks won and defeated king omen and destroyed the castle uh and you know are now nominally in charge of this area uh even though they basically don't pay a lot of attention here because they're busy in a war somewhere else um, and so that's what he's basically referring to though is the creation of the gray waste and like massive destruction of most of the woad that these guys kind of used to be in charge of uh, several hundred years ago, uh, which led to the, the creation of this uh, great waste. So. Monsieur Le DM, what language are they speaking? 
Well, you guys have mostly talked to them in Elvish, so they're probably all speaking Elvish, but, you know, if any of you guys are translating, you can just say that, like, you're translating for each other. We don't have to I mean, role play yeah, I think Roz would keep a running translation back and forth. Um, to that, I think Silas then would step forward and say, you're asking us to apologize for mistakes made by humans of the past, and that I cannot do. What happened, happened, and I could try to change it if I would, but I cannot. None of us here were responsible. None of us here, besides maybe Anna, are old enough to remember. I'm a hundred years old. One thing, under Good King Edmund's rule, Bedigar will prosper. The woad of the Orchid Court, within its borders, will remain at peace. But the thing that is r- residing in Bedegar currently is not human, is not Elven, is not Tabaxi, is not Janasi. This thing is not of this world. And if we let it maintain power and grow, what you have left will not survive. Okay. I, at this point, as you guys have said a number of things to these people, I would like everyone to make an insight check. Um. <laughs> oh, shit. Yikes. Oh. Coming in with a hot 12. <laughs> oh, Shanty got an 8. <laughs> I'm going to burn DM inspiration for advantage. Okay. Yeah, can I burn my um, chat and spell? Do we need to use our chat inspiration? Do we have to re-roll or just take the second? Yeah, oh, you also have Bardic, okay. uh, Daniel. I'm going to burn mine. Yeah, I'm going to do the Bardic. Roll a D8. Yep. What? This is insight? 21. We're yes, okay. insight. Er, <laughs> 22. <laughs> Perdita got another 12. Brutal. And Shanty got a 7 okay. instead Ross of a 8. Got two. So a final, I'd like a final number from everyone, please. So we'll 12. go, I'll go in order on screen. Perdita. 12. Shanty. Uh, do you want me to take the 7 or the 8? <laughs> uh, it would be the 8, right? Because you, Great. Yeah. Um, cool. Solomon. 22. Okay. Um, Roz. Two. Silas. Not not 22, just two. <laughs> also a 12. Okay. Uh, and Enna. 21. Okay. So we've got a 21 from Enna and a 22 from Solomon. So as you guys are kind of like floundering and de- like trying to respond to these folks uh, you know and there's major cultural differences and there's history that you know to them is much more recent and relevant like this old dude was like alive when that shit happened you know what i mean like like an old elf is like a thousand years old so something that happened a couple hundred years ago is like asking bonus mom about some stuff that happened in the 80s you know what I mean? Like, she would remember that stuff, right? Um, and so, but you're young, you're young at heart. <laughs> uh, but Enna and um, Solomon, I think you start to sort of see a, you probe into the questions and the things that they've asked you, and you get the sense that they're looking for a couple of things from you guys that will sort of like turn the scales here. Anna nibbled around the edges of one of them, which is offering them assistance. Anna offered like a deal, like a this for that. You, Anna, I, I think we'll put this on your, on, you realize this. They might be more interested in just like you guys offering to help them versus like do this for me and all they like as an elf you would be like they would probably find 
Because, like, you guys have been very polite and, you know, um, and very, like, obsequious in a way, right, to these folks. Uh, but I think you would feel like these um, elves would respond more favorably to, um, a, like, a a material humbling of yourselves. Like, you have performatively humbled yourselves. But, like, but then you tried to negotiate as, like, equals in the sense of, like, do this for me and I'll do that for you, right? And I think you get the sense of just, like, a, a show of faith without, without saying, like, in return you have to do nice things for us, but just saying, like, as your neighbors can we help you is a bit more in the elvish spirit. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that they'll turn around and do what you want them to do, right? But that's the trick is, like, they would think better of you if you offered to help them without that expectation of, you know, this sort. Because I think they would view that kind of way that humans trade like that as, like, almost vulgar. You know what I mean? It's, like, disingenuous. It's, like, not genuine. Like, you only want to do the thing because you expect something from me, you know, whereas, like, if we're... Like, we should help each other. You know what I mean? So that's, like, I think what Anna kind of clocks. I think, Solomon, with your 22, I think you're seeing something different, which is the questions that they've asked about the alliance and about, like, the, um, you know, your willingness to fight and that kind of thing that like you've all been so like they're not giving you anything but you've all been extremely like reserved like you took a little bit of umbrage when they called you frail and spineless right but like even then even in like offering to you know duel them you f all have been very like controlled right and i think you sort of recognize, despite the fact that they've been extremely, like, stoic, that, like, they're looking for a show of passion. And they're looking for a sense of, like, devotion to an alliance. Like, how serious are you guys about this alliance? You know, because I think you realize elves li live a long time. And they don't have a lot of kids. And you are asking them to, like... So, I, I guess what I, what I kind of mean by that is, like... Elves take the premise of death... Like, a little differently than humans do, right? Like, if an elf dies in their 500s... You know what I mean? Like, it's a really different kind of grief they experience about that, right? And so that's, like, what you're asking is their help in a military endeavor. And so for an elf, like, the choosing of when they fight and die is, like, a major, major decision, right? Which it is for a human, but I think it's, like, even more profound for an elf. And so, like, they, wanna, they want a sense of an equal kind of a devotion from you folks like a passion and a sense that if their people die for castle ren that an equal devotion is felt by the heroes so uh, between the two of you those are kind of the things that you tumble to is like th they don't want to bargain for assistance because that would be vulgar and they also are looking for a sense that you understand like the gravity of what you're asking and that you have kind of like a passion and devotion to this that is, you know, meets them equally where they are. So, so what Solomon does, realizing from what he's gotten from this insight, raises both hands and flat palms, pulls them out, and just hits himself in the side of the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god classic anime <laughs> love it and he steps forward a little bit more and he says I think I realize that we have been rude to you 
and I apologize. So, I would like to say, your woad is part of Pedigar and part of Rend. And as the hand of Rend, it is my duty to help where I can. How may I help you? And Solomon kind of takes a knee as to serve. And he's he's used to this. This is yeah. what he does. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to give one last opportunity then here for after that insight check for Anna to if you have anything you'd like to add before I kind of resolve this. Yes. Uh, Anna will step forward and say, um, we will be it. Um, we can. Uh, anything that you may need, we are more than happy to provide. For it would it would be very selfish of us to ask for help and not give back in return. Okay. Uh, real quick, did, did anyone else burn chat inspiration on that whole endeavor? Okay, be mom. Anyone else? No. Okay, great. Um, and I think after a nu- one final moment spent regarding you, um, oh, also, some of the other ones uh, introduced themselves to you. Oh, yeah. So, uh, the individual, and I'm going to put some of these names in chat for you. Um, so the older male elf who asked about the past, uh, is Silwell Dollarin. Good luck with that name, everyone. Uh, and the individual, you already spoke to Falwin, Falrenel, or sorry, Fariel. Uh, one last one of the council speaks up. Uh, this individual is sort of twirling a U wand in their hands. Let's go show sure. Uh, they have like pink hair uh, and they kind of have um, uh, skin that takes on uh, some different skin tones um, and uh, they introduce themselves and say I am Liri Alinar. it may be that you are different than those who broke our last agreement and perhaps your castle and people have some role to play. That history remains to be written, but your lives require little ink. And yet, it seems there is passion in your blood, and we are in agreement that Saxton, the so-called Lord, should not grow stronger. We might would lend you our thorns, archers unparalleled, with them at your side, you have a chance to beat your enemy and restore the land's balance. And yet, we cannot spare them. For the thorns hold at bay a great evil. The forest poisoner. Chlorindraxorus. Lairs within our lands. A green dragon twists the forest and draws hordes of goblins and unseely fae to his side. Are you prepared to give your lives for the Orchid Court? Done. Is this still all in Elvish and are people translating to Roz us is frantically? translating. Okay. And then Anna says done, and Silas is going to just tap her on the shoulder and be like, one moment. And I kind of just goes like, oh, no. <laughs> we are prepared to take on this challenge, but we want in exchange a full commitment from the Orchid Court. We need as much as you can give. If we fail, this world won't survive either.
Um, yeah, uh, Lirialinar sort of cocks an eyebrow and says, We've offered you our best archers. It's the best we have to give. But they currently protect us from a dragon that will surely swoop down and slay the rest of us if we send them off before dealing with this problem. You Solomon. offer to help, that's the help we need. Solomon stands up and goes, let me correct you on one thing. Speaking to the elf. A dead dragon. Smite. 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 Odita reaches in, gets her short sword, and she just slides it across the floor and says, I will help you. Yeah, I think Silas actually takes his sword out once again, his wand as well, puts it in front of him and says, direct us where to go. Roz draws her short sword. And my sword! <laughs> and Shanty will kind of do a, a low sweeping bow, but look up and her eyes are glowing and she says, and my spores. Anna takes out a flower and... And she holds it out and she says, a dragon will be the least of your worries, I promise. And hands it to the elf. And then kind of like, does a little flutter. <laughs> and, uh... <clears throat> as you all pledge... To this endeavor, you hear a sound from the individuals who have gathered to watch. You hear cold, high laughter. They want us dead. They want us to burn! Goodbye, cruel world. Where's... Sorry, I'm looking for... I was hoping to make it to 101. So sad. My... Okay. Sorry, Twilight will visit your grave. Oh, oh shit. I gotta get there. I gotta come back alive. Oh, she'll be pissed if I don't. Hang on. Um, I am missing a handout. I thought I had. So give me one second, everyone. I know this is anticlimactic, and I hate that for me. I really do. Uh, oh, come on. Okay, hang on for just a second, everybody. Uh, I'm going to get this art ready. Um, we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, but let me just sort of like leave you on this moment. Uh, you hear, uh, bursting out from the crowd, a high and cold laugh. <laughs> and you turn and see an individual... One, Enna, which you recognize. Dark hair, pointed ears, dressed in fine clothes. And that, folks, uh, is where we're going to take a quick break. We're not done for the evening. We're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to get this art ready for everybody. Uh, let's take... <laughs> A few minutes. We'll come back at, let's say, 8.40. Um, give me plenty of time to get this thing put together. Uh, I thought that I did it previously, but apparently not. So, uh, we will pop onto that other screen, and we will be back in just a few minutes, folks. Hey. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, so, as you turn and look, you see 
uh, this individual with sort of a uh, grin on his face. Yeah. Oh god, he's hot! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what have I done? Is he? He looks like Ben Shapiro. Ooh. Oh. No! Oh. Instantly. His wow. face is- okay, no, his face, looks, okay, yeah. his, his face does look easy. better than this. He doesn't have the same face, but anyway. Um, and he says... Same ears, though. Um, <laughs> he says... Ah, my, my, my. What an exciting little pledge we've all made today. Kill the dragon, save the world. I'm sorry, who are you? <laughs> ah, who indeed? Mm. You really don't know. Mm. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Well, perhaps this will uh, explain things. Uh, and he unhinges his jaw, which becomes half reptilian, and breathes a cloud of poison into the gathered people here. I would like everybody to please make me... Let me find this guy. So he is Ben Shapiro. Ah, <laughs> very funny. Uh, everybody, please make me a Constitution saving throw. Mm. Oh, what and a, you what get a plus. You get a, a plus four. Uh, it's a thirty-foot cone, so it like hits the entire crowd. Anyone who's an mm. ally within, ch -ch -ch. let me find it. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm bringing inspiration. Yeah. Or of protection. Anyone Oof. within ten feet of me gets a plus four to. Their I think you're probably all safe. within within ten feet because I, I mean you're like clumped up talking to these people. So awesome. So I'm, we get I'm a plus four. Still gonna go ahead and burn <laughs> inspiration. Okay, so people are burning DMs. So uh, who's all burned inspiration? And is burned inspiration here? Yeah. Roz. Roz. So does a thirty do it? It's a great question. Does a thirty save? Oh man! Don't even. All right, Don't let's even. get some final numbers. Okay, I got a fourteen. Okay. Oh, but pretty sure I have resistance to poison damage, though. Acid. Oh, it's acid. Sorry. Damn. All right, never. Try, tried. Thank you. Wait, acid and poison don't... No, poison. No. Green yeah, dragons separate. are poison. Green dragons are poisonous, and mm. um. Acid and poison Ew. are different types of damage in 5e, and water genasi are resistant to acid damage, but not poison damage. I believe dwarves oh, are resistant to poison damage. That's okay. Ew, or to gross. being poisoned and have they advantage. They have advantage against, they against have constitution they, yeah, saving they have some throws, stuff. yeah. Okay, final numbers, folks. Uh, we'll, we'll just go to the other way we did before. Perdita. 14. 14. Uh, Shanty. Uh, 14 also. Okay. Um... Roz. What's what's the buff we get from Solomon? Plus, Plus four. four. Plus four. Uh, 25. I skipped Solomon. I don't know why. Uh, let's try that again just so I can get everybody in my head. Perdita, 14. Shanty, 14. Solomon is a 30. 30. Roz. 25. Okay. Uh, Silas. Shockingly high 23. Okay, and Enna. Ten. All right. Anybody who got higher than a 14 constitution Fuck. saving throw saved and takes half damage. What about me having evasion? Does not impact this as this poison seeps in and you all take 41 what? points of Fucking poison ass, damage. Dude. What the a, to 20, huge, right? a huge chunk of the elves are immediately killed. Uh, um, and uh, react. No. I, let me finish narrating first. Okay. Sorry. 
Uh, because you're all completely surprised by this, right? I mean, this person shows up, you're kind of like, who is this guy? And then just, like, blasts this uh, poison out. A huge swath of the of the elves who were watching are just instantly killed. Uh, of the uh, elves among the leadership, uh, the warrior woman seems to have survived. And strangely enough, the uh, the man with the kind of like the older man with the hair slightly going gray survives. However, the woman with the wand um, falls uh, falls unconscious. Um, and this uh, individual grins and says, uh, "As as you move to react, because you're probably." 40 feet away from this individual um and uh as you kind of cough and sputter and the poison gas begins to dissipate this thick fog of green smoke slowly kind of like phasing out uh in the suddenly emptied out space around as people have begun to scream and flee you see he grins and then in a moment is no longer a man and you see a massive green dragon standing in the spot. The weight of it crushes the platform that you were all standing on, which falls a goodly distance to the ground with everyone on it. As whoosh, the wings begin to beat, you see a few of the guards take pot shots, but the chaos prevents them from really getting purchase in the dragon's thick hide as it flies off into the woods. Everybody falls, and you take an additional seven points of damage. So, in other words, we had to roll a 15 to take no, half No, 14 damage. saves. 14 saves. 14 right, or higher. I misunderstood the Sorry, I may have say. said that wrong. 14 saves. Below 14 takes 41 points of damage, and then seven more points of damage as... Uh, as you, as this, so this whole platform crumbles uh, and everyone falls. The entire distance that the dragonflies had lifted you up, uh, and you all fall in a massive heap. Although the ground here is like the underbrush of the forest, uh, is relatively and soft. Any, so have, any chance that I can use a reaction to cast Featherfall? Oh yeah, you absolutely can do that. Okay. Uh, oh, so nice. on the on many, whatever number of creatures you can cast Featherfall on, you can cast Featherfall. Choose up to five creatures. I'm gonna upcast it. Uh, okay. I'm gonna up. Well, it doesn't have an upcast. Choose well, up to five. Uh, let's look at. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, up to five falling creatures within range. Yeah, it doesn't have an upcast on it, so. Um, uh, you have to pick right. the five. Then, then she casts Roz casts feather fall on everyone except for her. Okay. All right, but I need to get straight on the damage <laughs> now. I'm so sorry. Sure. Half of 51. Uh, 41. Is that 20, half, of, half of 41. 20. Is, that, is that 20, 20. or 21? That's 20. We round down 20. on damage. And uh, Roz is the only person, uh, only character who will take falling damage. Okay. So the rest and of you Solomon don't take that seven grab falling damage. Roz. Thank you. Uh, I don't think so, because uh, when Featherfall is cast on you, you yeah, begin to fall I slower. Go, and, and Roz just falls with everyone else. Uh, but the rest of you sort of slowly settle to the ground. Um, um, slowly settle to the ground. It only takes you a few seconds to, to get to the ground. Uh, and everything is chaos. Uh, what are you guys doing? Okay, so is the dragon gone? or is Yeah, I mean, like it flew off uh, above the woods. So if you want to charge off after it on foot uh, you're more than welcome to <laughs> if you think you can track it through the canopy that is uh, more than 100 feet above your head so we can't like see it fly well or so like so like it flies off yeah I mean it like broke so like there's a big hole in the canopy now where this dragon um, blasted through the branches as it powerful wings sort of launched it into the air so you can see the bare sky more than you've been able to see in like a day and a half since you came in here um, but once it passes beyond directly above that kind of in whatever angle you'd be able to see uh, it you can kind of tell the vague direction it went off in 
Uh, uh, Pixel, I have waited a very long time for this. You are the only person here who knows how long I have waited for this moment to share this. <laughs> oh, Aww. very good. That's Bonus Mom's Green Dragon Mini that she painted like four years ago, three years ago. Yes. Aww, Aww, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Not for um, this campaign necessarily, but that's just yay. what she said. I had to oh. share it, you know, and I'm going and to... And, yeah, so you can see now. that, like, several of the elders have fallen unconscious um, and are making death saves. You can see that people are rushing around trying to, like, do medicine checks. Uh, people are, like, screaming and um, freaking out. You can see um, that the warriors are trying to, like, organize themselves. Um, I think as soon as Silas lands, he's going to turn to the purple-haired uh, elf and the one with the sword and say... Our deal is still on. Do you have horses, deer, anything to make it through this force quickly? Um, dragonflies. Dragonflies. He says... <sighs> speed, speed is of the essence, but... We can't charge off half-cocked and unready. You don't understand. It's not just the dragon. There are forces arrayed under its banner. We were about to discuss the plan when all of this happened. Um, our forces will draw out the bulk of their army, as it were. The thorns and other units we control can draw their attention. Um, from what we surmise, the dragon will likely not attack until its underlings have had a chance to soften us up. This was just a surprise attack meant to rattle us. Um, our plan would be for for us to draw them out and then you to take some back roads, uh, sort of uh, uh, hidden paths through the forest to reach the cavern and attack it unsuspecting. If we all just charge off after it now, you'll never make it through its forces. There's simply too many of them. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, yeah, show us the path, and I'll turn to Solomon and say, can you give them, um, give the ones who are down and unconscious a tiny bit of healing each just to wake them back up? I'm on it. Solomon's going to go off in healing hands for one point, as many okay. as he needs to. All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to do... Uh, Thank a you. couple of rolls here as you as you go. As this is happening, uh, Silas is also downing a potion of healing that he has. Uh, greater is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, um, Leary Alinar rolls a nat twenty on their second death save. They failed one from taking the falling damage, and then rolled a fourteen and a nat twenty. So before you get to hey. them, um, they sort of uh, groggily kind of come back to it, uh, and you can see actually another elf has rushed up into the clearing. Um, this elf uh, had rushed to the side of. Leary Alinar, and you can see a family resemblance between the two. Um, and as uh, Leary Alinar sort of comes back to consciousness, uh, this elf sort of like cries out and like hugs them, uh, burying their head in uh, their shoulder. Um, as they kind of hold each other, Solomon, you are racing around kind of trying to uh, put a little bit of healing into everybody uh, that you can reach. Uh, although there were some outright fatalities because, you know, those folks that didn't have more than 20 hit points, even if they saved, were just, you know, or if, yeah, didn't have more than 10 hit points, I guess. So, like, a lot of the commoners basically were just wiped out instantaneously, but folks that had a couple levels of anything, you know, managed to survive. Um, and... Uh, after a brief moment, things are being kind of organized, and this other elf, uh, who still has uh, Lirialinar's head in their lap, um, sort of uh, 
looks down um, at Lirialnar, and you hear uh, hear them say, uh, you hear her say, Gyleria say, Mother, it is time for my rite of passage. I will accompany the heroes. Um, you all look and um, Lirialinar uh, is shocked and confused and concerned. And uh, but they they turn to you and say I leave the decision to you. Will you honor my daughter Gyleria's request? Honored. Let's go. Okay. Um, so be it. Do we want to go quickly or do we want to try to recuperate? I need to go back and get my sword sword. Uh, I'm very damaged. Um, I we need to be sure of a plan. We don't even know where we are going. Is there more information? Uh, Gyleria says I can lead you there. The plan, is, the plan is the Elves of the Woad will distract. We have to get there before it can outmaneuver us. Time is desperate. We have to go now. Well, does anybody have a short sword I can borrow? What happened? To you? Wait, what happened to your short sword? I, I put it on the floor and slid it up to the people when I said I will do it. You can find it in the rubble. We I'm not taking your short sword. What oh, are you okay. talking about? Oh. <laughs> you can dig through the rubble long enough to get your short sword. Wait, my sword! What's my short sword? My tail is not enough, although it is an awesome tail and I love it very much. All right, well, I... Oh. Yeah, and, uh, uh, Go ahead. We're not even going to get a short rest? We don't have time. <laughs> and, uh... And I was, like, kind of freaking out. She's, like, having a panic attack, is, like, crying a little bit. And she starts running in the direction the dragon went. Okay. She just whoosh, goes. Is that the right way? Yeah, I think uh, Gyleria, who's also a wood elf and can keep up with Anna, <laughs> um, yeah. sort of, like, quickly... Uh, catches up to you and begins directing you to the to the pathways in question um and also like trying to set a pace that your friends can match so that the two of you don't get you know off alone uh it's up to you whether uh, or not about, you go ahead yeah i think anna is just gonna say lead my friends i'll meet you there <laughs> uh perdita you can go ahead and take nine hit points back Plus so seven, much. so sixteen. I get sixteen. Well, then I'm back to full health. How did I manage to do that? Thank you, because I did have four temporary hit points. Oh, there you go. Uh, how's everyone else doing? Down now. Do this and run. But, but we, I've already, I've already taken off. <laughs> you better uh, save something for later. That's why I'm not doing this healing potion. I was able to top myself. Uh, back Silas, up. take eight points. Okay, I'm all, I'm almost all the way back. I'm down one point, so it's whatever. Well, take, I think that take that point with uh, your okay. hands. <laughs> Great. Okay. Actually, uh, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and burn a false life scroll um, to give myself 1d4 plus 4 in temp. Okay. Um, my so count, you seem so vigorous. Ah, oh, damn. It's only one. That's fine. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. You're what glowing. You I'm glowing. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Perdita um, takes off as soon as she feels better. She certainly takes off. Yeah, I'm. I'm after story. Anna. I'm making sure Anna doesn't get so far that we can't get to her if we need to. Okay. Away. Yeah, and um, so you all take off into the forest. I wanted um, the dragonfly though. Gyleria trying to uh, lead you through and uh, as you run and kind of dish out healing and you look behind you and you can see the elves scrambling to kind of get their troops 
moving and also, you know, respond to, like, the crisis that just happened and their, like, highest seat of power being, like, smashed by a dragon. Um, Gyleria informs you that it's 12 miles from the Council of the Orchid Court to the Dragon's Lair. Uh, and you head through the Forest Passage. Um, eventually, you sort of emerge to the edge of a large uh, hill um, where some of the trees are thinned out. And you can see in the distance a uh, kind of tree-covered mountain um, and a large cave mouth. Uh, however you uh, can see in between you and there is a massive 80 foot wide and 100 foot deep ravine. Uh, you're not right at the ravine yet. You kind of, it's like there's you on the hill where you've, where Gyleria has brought you on this path that can show you um, the uh, you know, a view of what you're approaching and then you see a ravine uh, probably a mile or two ahead um standing in between you and that. Okay, so a couple of things I guess we have to resolve. One is Anna has rushed off alone, yes? Okay. Yeah. Whoo, boy. Is Anna that much faster than us? Or She's she got a speed gone? of 35 feet per round, and everyone else is 30. Feline um, agility. But yeah, you guys, But the thing with feline agility is you guys have to stop every round, right? Well, no, we don't have to stop. It's just just if we want to use it again, we would. Well, have yeah, but I'm to. saying like so. In order to keep that pace, like you could keep up with her on a short sprint, but over the long distance, right. those five feet are going to accumulate. Like, so on a long run, she is faster, right? True. Uh, and also, kind of had a head start <laughs> because she just charged off into the woods. So I think, uh, I think that Anna is the so, and I guess Anna. You're not sticking with the person who knows where they're going, so we're going to need... Well, okay, so I'll, I have a spell that I readied locate creature. Okay. So can I just cast that? So I guess... Oh, good lord. Do you want me so to... Lo well, locate creature works within a thousand feet, and uh -huh. you probably could have could have cast it before it was outside of a thousand feet. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, mm, but the thing is, this creature can run, di can fly directly, and you've got to like go through the woods. So, okay. he, well, so here's the thing: you can reach the ravine. The question is, how are you going to get across the ravine, right? Mm -hmm. Because if this thing's going to fly directly over it, but it doesn't need any way to cross it because it can fly. So the question is: is the most direct route between the two places? Does that happen to coincide with? the place where you can actually cross the ravine because that's where Gyleria is taking everyone else. Or can Anna find that place, right? And how and how does that play in? So um, I think the first thing we're going to roll is a luck check just to <laughs> see how, if you're within, when you reach the ravine, are you within eyesight of, of what you need to cross it? Okay. So roll me a D100 uh, and you want 50 or higher here. Big money. 97. 97. Okay. Excellent. All right. So, um, where you come out, um, Anna, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What can I, is everyone going to see like a blank screen or can you guys see what's going on here? I see like, uh, okay. looks like a, like, like broccoli. A log? Okay. Yeah, log. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see a log here. and okay. then the trees. All right, Anna. Uh, you come out. You see this ravine. Uh, the sides are made of loose rock that crumbles easily. And you see a vine-covered fallen amber wood tree uh, that appears to have fallen and stretched away across the ravine. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do? She's going to go up to the log. Okay. 
Yeah, she's she's gonna cross it. She's gonna cross it. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. So, uh, give me a DC thirteen acrobatics check, please. Eleven. Eleven? Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> as you begin to cross the log, um, Anna. You find that the vines underneath of the log uh, whip out. I don't really have a good uh, thing for this. The vines underneath the log whip out and grab you probably by the time you get to about here. Okay. Um, and you are grappled. I would like Look. you to please roll initiative. Uh, <laughs> and now we have to find out how far away your friends are. <laughs> okay, so... How uh, me fighting with motherfucking nature. Uh, you are surprised Four. Uh, when this happens. Uh, that thing is... Okay, three. Oof, you both... Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess everybody else... No, Anna got into this mess, so Anna, please roll a d4, and that's how many rounds before your friends get here. Anna, can you miss each up? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh shit. Three. Three rounds. Okay. Okay. So. Couple of, couple of rounds. <laughs> All right. Uh, so right. you were surprised in the first round of combat. This thing uh, grabbed at you, but you've beaten it in initiative, so it does not get to act again. Uh, you are basically like hanging now on like you've like started to slip off the log and it grabbed you these vines like <laughs> grabbed you and start uh, you can tell they're beginning to pull you uh, like down and around and under the log uh, to whatever the center of this uh, sort of viney creature is um what uh, what do you do um so I'm grappled so wouldn't I have to become ungrappled so, uh, if you want to... So, the grapple condition uh, gives mm-hmm. you a speed of zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Oh, and you are restrained. So, you both have... Let me just put restrained and grappled in chat. Stand by one moment. So, this is what it means to be restrained, which you currently are. And this is what it means to be grappled, which you also are. So, your speed becomes zero. You can't benefit from any bonus to your speed. Attack rolls against you have advantage. Uh, your attacks have your attack rolls have disadvantage. You have disadvantage on deck save. Um, and while grappled, uh, the condition ends if the grappler is incapacitated or if something else moves you. But that does not necessarily apply to restrained. So, mm-hmm. uh, but you are both grappled and restrained. I'm going to put this little no sign on you. <laughs> indicating that you've been grappled as you charged across this uh, this log alone and without your friends. Mm. Okay. Um, can I try to to uh, can I try to do burning hands? Like, can I try to like grab it and like set it on fire? <laughs> Yeah, you can do burning hands. Uh, that does not require. Okay, so this thing has a tendril on you. Are you burning the tendril, or are you burning trying to burn the creature? Um, I, I'm kind of seeing her as grappled, and she like grabs the tendril and like tries okay. to catch it on fire, hoping that it spreads to the creature. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the tendril and- itself has. AC 20, 10 hit points. Um, can we, okay. Uh, I don't think the tendril, because it's grappling you, I don't think it can. I think it auto fails this deck save. So uh, if you would like to go ahead and roll damage uh, for your burning hands, this this cre- this tendril is going to fail. It's, uh, it's saving throw against your burning hands. Okay. Oh, and then I just click it. 
Um, well, it already rolled damage. The fist, so your DC oh, is 15, oh, okay. and then, yeah. So on spells, okay, sometimes cool. it does it that way. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so 15 damage. Uh, it burns the tendril itself. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily burn the creature, because you sort of see that, like, as the fire begins to shrivel up the tendril, it falls off, but, like, another one sort of, like, out of the creature. Um... Uh, Gross. anything else, okay. but that, but you are, you, like, scramble back onto the log now. You are, uh, I'm gonna say you're prone, but you okay. are on the log. Uh, would you like to move or do anything, uh, with that? Yeah, I'm gonna take, like, two steps. Uh, five, ten, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get off. I'm gonna back okay. up and get off the log. So you were prone. Standing up takes half your movement. Uh, oh, so okay. you so were here, so you've actually... got, I think, yeah, like 15 feet of movement. I think you can get to yeah, there. Yeah, take me here. There, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, it... Uh, you haven't escaped its reach, because it has crazy reach. So it does not get an attack of opportunity. Um, <clears throat> it is going to attempt to hit you with another tendril. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, however, that's a nat one. <laughs> so that is not going to do it. Um... So it lashes out with another tendril and misses. Your friends arrive in two turns. Anna, uh, uh, what would you like to do? All right, Anna is going to. I think I'm just going to cast Burning Hands again. Okay, uh, let's get a template here because I don't know if it's in range. Uh, close enough. Yeah, Back. you might have to get closer oh, to it. Be. Ah, frick. Uh, don't do that, Anna. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna. What do you uh, mean? Scratch. What do you mean? No, no, no. Stop peer pressuring me. <laughs> 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 uh. Wait for bonus mom to get there. Okay, hang on. Um, We're coming. Okay, so that's the template for burning hands. Yeah, you're just out of range. Right. Uh, okay. For it that's to fine. hit. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cast a, I'm going to cast a cantrip because I don't want to waste my spell slots. Okay. I'm going to cast Sacred Flame. Okay. All right. This thing is going to make a dexterity saving throw. It does not have great dexterity because it is uh, a big plant that is attached yeah, to wrecked. a log. Um, oh, damn. That is a 17, though. Rip. It's dexterity is a 17. Well, it rolled 18 minus one. Oh. So, uh, so it still succeeds. Shit. But, like, Gross. the odds are really not in its favor. It has to roll very well. It just got lucky. Yeah. Okay, so that is your action. Any more movement? Yeah, I'm just going to... I'm going to show hot 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm just going to... Well... You know what? No, we're going. We're in. We're in this now. We're in this. I'm staying where I'm at. I'm holding my okay. ground. Alrighty, that brings us to it. Uh, it really only has one move here, and that is to try to grasp you in another tendril. Uh, but I've only got an eleven to hit. Negatory. Okay. Trying. All right, Anna. Um, I'm gonna do Sacred Flame again. Okay. Just a burn, baby. It's a deck save. How? How is it rolling this well? That's a 17 minus 1 is 16. I don't understand. The odds, it only has like a 35% chance of actually succeeding on this. If that, no, it's like a, it has to roll a 16 or higher. Because if it rolls a 15, it fails. Yeah, it's got like a 20% chance of, of succeeding it, but it did. It's because I love plants. It's true. Okay. Uh, any movement? No, I'm staying where I'm at. Okay. I've got a 16 to hit. Uh, yeah. It would, that would be my, uh... Armor class? My armor class. Oh, no, no, no. I My armor class 17. 17, okay. <laughs> uh, I also need to take off this grapple. Uh, it misses. You guys are just, like, trading whiffs here. Um, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, at this point, all of your friends show up. As you have been locked in battle with this thing for several rounds now. 
Uh, everybody else is going to show up. Um, and we're going to have you guys roll initiative, and I'll have you come on to the battlefield uh, in one of the, you know, things here. Feel free to roll that initiative as soon as you get... Oh, I messed up. I'm sorry. I went ahead and uh, rolled it. I did too. I was too eager. Is... Okay. Um. So we've got you and you. And turn. Add turn. Let's do okay. Bras. Try and find a place I can see everybody here. First in, first out. Okay. Uh, and then I got a roll for this, uh, for Galeria. Not us spy foeing. Okay, uh, so Evil. Shanty, what was your, uh, initiative? Thirteen. It's off Thirteen. To uh, Perdita, what was your initiative? Nineteen. Nineteen. 149, sound about right now. Uh, okay, what do we got? We can take away, help arrive, so you guys have that. Okay, uh, looks like as you guys approach, uh, Roz is first. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have everybody assume that whatever order you get in initiative was like your marching order. So just show up in one of these squares on the road whenever it's your turn. Just like move yourself there and start from that position, if that makes sense. Uh, Roz, however, you are already there. So please go ahead and uh, you approach and you see Enna sort of like precariously standing on this uh, log overlooking a massive ravine that looks like 80 feet down uh, or 100 feet deep and uh, locked in battle with this weird vine creature. Um, what do you do? <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't even have time for a snack. Uh... Roz is going to uh, feline agility run all the way up um, leap uh, basically as close to Enna as okay. she can. As and, you get on the uh, log, you need to make an acrobatics check. Oh, sure. That's a 13. That is exactly what you needed <laughs> to not <laughs> fall. <laughs> and uh, uh I'm going to attempt to attack uh, the vine creature or the vine if it will uh, dis disengage the two of them with uh, my short sword. You are not in melee range of the vines. Oh. Like, where? so the body of the vines is in the middle here. I don't know if you guys, um, let me, like, color this, give it an aura. Oh, or I, okay. Um, yeah, it's a little. Yeah, it's hard to see. We'll give it, like, a. Okay. That's where the vine's, like, body is, basically. But it has, like, a 50-foot reach of vine. So if it grabs you in a tendril, you can attack the tendril. But, like, to actually get to... And you can kind of see this, but basically underneath the log is this hanging mass of vines. And whatever this creature is, you sort of sense, like, as you look at the vines, that that's the core of it. That's where the vines are all snaking out of. Um, okay. <clears throat> would, would I be able to rush past... Anna, then? Uh, I don't see how you would do that on the log. Like, if you... I, well, you have a climb speed. I guess you could, like, crawl under the log and go. But, like... It's... You know? You'd have to crawl back. So if you've got enough movement for that... Um, yeah, with feline agility, I should. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, you can crawl under there and crawl back on top. That's a very cat thing to do, I guess. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so Roz is going to pop up on the other side, and Roz just wants to get into melee with the vine thing. Okay, yeah, so um, I don't think you can... Well, I guess you can share space with this creature. It's kind of an odd creature. That is certainly in melee if you want to attack oh. from there. So, well, that's fine. Okay, we... Is this is this melee? Yes. Sorry, I'm I'm a little. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's uh, an odd creature, and the, and the bulk of it is underneath the log, so it's like it's very whack. But that is it. part of the challenge of this particular encounter. Uh. So Roz, I had to use her action to dash. She's going to use her bonus action 
to give Enna Bardic Inspiration. Okay. All right. Enna, you've got these. Movement action, bonus action. That's everything Thank from you. Roz. Solomon, uh, as you come onto the field, you're up next. What would you like to do? Bonus action, Misty Step. Okay. So let me pop a level from my level two spell slots. Oh, not too far. Okay, so I'm going to misty step to about right here. Okay. Okay. So right here, Solomon's going to draw his longbow. Okay. And he's going to pull back and take a shot at the creature. Okay. He's going to use strength for the modifier. Okay. I got to switch. Okay. Longbow. Ooh, 12. Uh, let's see. Uh, that does not hit. Okay. I'm going to make another longbow attack. Okay. 21. That does hit. Ignore the 8, 10 piercing. Okay. Uh, yeah, you launch your uh, bow into this, and it sort of like sinks deep into the vines, and you see them shudder a little bit as they flail about. Uh, that's action, bonus action. Anything else from Solomon? Uh, I think that's <clears throat> it. Yep, I'm done. All right, Bernita. All right. As Perdita gets into the clearing, she too is using her feline agility and racing toward the thing. But seeing what was happening to Rozzy, Roz with the agility check and whatever, Perdita's going to move right, right up to there. Okay. And I would think that she is beside the bridge and then can see under the bridge. Yeah, I think you and could And she is going to use there. her short bow okay. to shoot at the, t at the monster under the bridge. Okay, make your attack. That is a 16 to hit. Does not hit. All right. Uh, is it additional <sighs> movement if she doesn't have it? She wants to uh, go down on her knees where she can get a better aim at it. Um, I don't think that uh, going prone takes extra movement that I know of. Then she's going to crouch with her bow, hoping to get a better shot the <clears throat> next time. And a 16 does not hit. I said what I said. And you stand by it, don't you? I sure do. Does the log seem unstable? Like, um, would it roll if it was given enough force? I mean, it would. if it was given enough force, sure. The question is how much force. It, it's not like you're sitting on it and it's, like, wobbling. Like, you think, you know, several people would have to, like... Huh? It's like that kind of log. It's like, because it fell over and it's like sunk in. Some of its roots are probably still in the ground from where it, you know, it's like, how, how do I explain this? Like the, the roots, which are long, which are kind of go out, not as deep, but pretty wide from a tree have been tipped up. Right. And so some of them are still kind of connected. Right. And you kind of climb on this thing around them. Uh, and so, and then it's like over time has just sunk into the earth on either side of this thing. So it would be a pretty tough move. Okay, that's Perdita. Next up is uh, this elf lass, Gyleria, uh, who also basically only really has a longbow to try to deal with this. She's got 35 feet of movement. That doesn't really do her any good. So she's going to dash in this first round to kind of do what Solomon did and get the other angle on it. Uh, but she doesn't have anything left to actually take a shot. That brings us to Shanty. Okie dokie. So Shanty. From there. Sorry. No, no worries. Uh, so Shanty is going to go ahead and uh, wild shape, I guess, into an ape. Okay, wild shape. There it is. Me. Yep. Okay, let's... Hang on, my 
Roll 20 is being wacky. Spine has been super wonky today. All good. Gorilla panic. Okay. Um, you need... Do I have that in your list of wild shapes? No. Uh, so you are going into... You said a gorilla? Uh, ape. Yeah. Ape. Mm-hmm. Okay, Shanty regular Kong. ape. There you go. <clears throat> Drag this down into here. Uh, boom. Oh. Okay. Okay, bam, bam, bam. Okay, uh, let's hey. see here. Super sorry, because I know that you are fiddling with things right now. But can uh, I make a? I'm sorry, can I make a critter adjustment? Sure. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, wanted to do a war horse then. A if war I could. horse. Okay. Yes. Oh, no, I didn't want a riding... No, wait, what? Why do I have a riding... No, I don't. Okay. It's a big horse. I want you to go. Big ol' horse. Doing horse stuff. Okay, stand by, everyone. One moment while I set up this token. Can you can, stay. You can stay as a horse for, like, eight hours or something crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. For just a moment. That's why I was like, whatever... Our strategy, let's go ahead and do the thing. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, a moment, yeah. Shanty's we'll like half shape. horse, half ape. She's just like <laughs> computing, like stuck in yeah. between. She's like glitching a little bit. Ape arms. What horrors the mind <laughs> has wrought. I'm so used to playing uh, moon druids that I keep forgetting that there's different <laughs> circles and forgetting that it takes me longer to shape. So I'm used to just like it being a super quick thing. But I guess it would be kind of horrifying just watching this like slow morphing <laughs> process. Okay. Um, so we've given you warhorse stats, and Kick. and your in initiative here. Uh, and you should have control of that token. I hope. Fantastic. Okay. Great. So you've turned you into so a warhorse who has to walk yep. across <laughs> a fallen log. I'm excited for for this. We'll get to that. You know, me too. It's we'll be cross fine. that log when we get there. Ah, but up. Just- <laughs> All right, take some DM inspiration, Taylor, for the pun. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, also, Daniel takes some for the for the anime face slap earlier. Sorry, continue. I'm interrupting your turn. Uh, no, it's Shanty. All good. Uh, so I'm gonna come up as close as I can to the log. And okay. uh, in true shanty fashion, uh, she's realized that she has possibly not thought all the steps through. And uh, <laughs> she's going to put her front two hooves onto the log and kind of give it like a like a little shake <laughs> and see if okay. it seems like it's going to hold. Uh, how hard are you doing this? I mean, not enough to hurt anybody. Not enough, just okay. enough to so, see if we yeah, can, like, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like it's, like, shaking with just a little bit of force, so. Okay, but um, do I seem to be stable on it? That's what the goal is. Yeah, here. I like, mean, yeah. I I, like, so, I guess, like, if your attempt is, like, this without is attempting to, like, shake it, I don't know. It's, like, it's stable enough that it's not shaking when Anna and Roz run around on it. Uh, but you also outweigh them by several hundred pounds, probably. You know what I mean? So you'd have to put a significant amount of force on it to find that out. <laughs> and they're on it now. So I don't know that there's like a sweet Honestly, spot that you can hit in the moment. Not, you know what I mean? It's not a terrible idea if the log flips over. Like, hear me out. Roz has a climbing speed. She can hold on. Enna is grappled. So unless the creature lets go of her, not anymore. She'll also, no, I'm not. oh, you're not grappled. Not grappled anymore. Well, no. Then, Anna broke the grapple when she burning hands uh, to the first uh, tendril, and then it was never able to get a grapple on her again. I uh, keep. Then missing. you better grab it back, dang it. 
So, How um, deep is this ravine? Uh, I believe the adventure tells me, and so I'm going to was read it. Like it eighty feet deep or something. Uh, oh, it is. Just kidding. Hang on. An eighty foot wide, hundred foot deep ravine, <laughs> uh, which is filled with with jagged rocks at the bottom. I have feather fall. So still, if so. you fall, you will take. Uh, Oh, this says you fall 50 feet before you strike a rocky outcropping. So it's like, it's unless you're directly in the center of this thing, you're going to hit the side of it before you hit the bottom of it, you know? Um, so, cool. anyway. So, my point is this. Uh, I don't think there's, like, a sweet spot you can hit, Shanty, where it, you can, like, pull off exactly what you're trying to pull off. It's like, if you hit it hard enough to know if the horse can stay on it, there's a chance that it will knock someone else off of it. Otherwise, you'll have to take your chance with just stepping on it. So those are basically, th that's the trade-off that you have. We're going to hang out just right here, okay. just, just for a second. All right. <laughs> Understood. So you've wild shape, you've moved. Uh, I don't think you have any bonus actions that you can do in this form. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Silas, <laughs> you're up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm just going to... I just got to shoot at it, I guess. Um, okay. I'm going to move to right here, and okay. I'm going to take a shot uh, with a fire bolt. Okay. I am going to say it has probably half cover from that vantage point because you don't have a really great angle on it yet. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not a better place for me to go. Yeah, I mean, uh, not not with the amount of movement you have at this point, right? So. Yeah. So, okay. you know what? Actually, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'll burn a blade song, <laughs> bonus action blade song, to make that 40 if I get to here. Would that help me out? Um, yeah, I think that's a better angle. I'll, I'll take away the half cover on that. Okay. Fire bolt! 19. 19 does not hit. Shit! This thing, I'll just tell Jesus you at this Christ. point, this thing has an AC of 20. Uh, it is... Oh! Yeah, because you're just hitting a big pile of leaves, and it's hard to know what where the actual important parts of it are. So. Where it's yeah. guts. Okay, so that's Firebolt. Anna, you're up. Yeah, Anna's going to turn around because she, she feels the log shake and she just turns around and sees this giant horse. And she just kind of, like, with everything going on, she her eye, like, twitches because she's officially, like, fucking losing it. Because <laughs> of everything that's happening. She's just like, what the actual fuck? Nosebleed. She, yeah. <laughs> She's, she's going psychotic. So she's going to do Sacred Flame again on the tentacle okay. thing. Now, again, this thing only has a 20% chance of succeeding. It must roll 16 or higher on the die to succeed. Oh, I guess I don't have to click it before you do it. And it My rolled apologies. a 3! Yay! I mean, it got a 3 modified. So it fails. It takes 4 radiant damage, finally. Yeah, get right. Successful. Uh, okay. That is your action. Anything else from Enna? Uh, nah, she's big chillin'. Okay. All right. Now this thing actually has, within range, quite a few targets. So, in fact, every single person here is within range. So, we're going to roll a d8. Uh, and we're going to go in initiative order, therefore, uh, with a one, Roz. And then, oh, God. Okay, hang on. Oh, Do no. It. Do it. Uh, it actually makes four attacks per round. That's what? awesome. Jesus. Uh, but it only, you know, it was only going wait. one on Anna. Is that how many because, tentacles it has? Or, uh, like, vines? Yes, yeah, that's how many vines um. it can do in a round. Uh, okay, so two is going to be Solomon. Three is going to be Enna again. And four, it rolled the same number. Nice. So it actually is going to roll that again for a four. What? Oh, you mean it's not going to attack Roz twice? Which is Gylaria. Okay. All right. Ooh. So uh, Roz, Solomon, Enna, and Gylaria in that order. 
Roz, 12 to hit. Solomon, 18. Enna, 13. Gyleria, 22. 18 no. misses. Miss. Misses everyone Miss. but the new girl. <laughs> Damn! So, not the, uh, not the tour guide. The tour guide gets grappled <laughs> uh, by the creature and is... Uh, yeah, and is like lifted into the air and restrained. That is all that it has. And uh, that brings us back to Ross. Oh boy. I wish this thing I, seemed like it had lungs because <laughs> there would be a stinking cloud for it. But uh, we are going to How safe does it feel to cast Thunderwave? <laughs> um, pretty unsafe, huh? Yeah, we're gonna cast Thunderwave at third level. Oh shit! Yeah. So wait, does it get pushed with Thunderwave? It's a great question. I believe it does, doesn't it? I think it's got to pass it check. Fail. Yeah, it gets pushed 10 feet. So can you aim it down to push it downward into the ravine? Okay. Con save. Where is it? But wouldn't that break the log? There it it is. might. Uh, that's that's what I'm mostly worried about is is damaging the log in a way that makes crossing. Okay, way so more it got a 21 on its con save. Of course it did. Well, it's a yeah, it is a con save. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, so it made the save, so it will take half damage. So that's 22 11. down to 11. Okay. Uh, and then the question is, what happens to the log? Um, let's this see. timber seems exceptionally sturdy. It should withstand a hisker's yowl. Let's see. I'm looking for... Does anyone know where in the DMG it lists the HP of objects? Oh, the hardness? Objects. Yeah. Okay, so this is a wood, so it has an AC of 15. And then this is a large, resilient object, but it's... Let's see, how big is a huge creature? I think this is a huge object, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Huge. 10 by 10, uh, 10 foot by 10 foot. So, yeah, I think this yeah. thing is not phased by the Thunder Wave. It splinters a little bit. There's Excellent. something to knock some stuff off of it. But um, I don't think a single Thunder Wave is going to blast a hole in this thing. So, um, yeah. Okay, so that is the damage. It failed. No, it made the save. Took half damage. It made the save. It's not Took moved. half damage. Um, Anything else from Roz? Roz is going to... Uh, Bonus, just I don't think it, it doesn't have to know the words that I'm saying for vicious mockery to work. Right? I believe vicious mockery specifically says that it does not have to have the capacity for uh, for language for that to work. Wonderful. Uh, so bonus action, vicious mockery on the vine creature. Um, You're just a bit of rot in our way. Yeah. If the target can hear you, though, it need not understand you. I would think this thing has hearing. We're just going to say that it does. Um, okay. So that's a bonus action wisdom save. God, 22. Damn. What is with this thing rolling great on saves? I don't understand. Uh, that brings us to Solomon. Okay, so Solomon sees this tentacle picking up our god, and that's a bad thing. So what Solomon's going to do is he's going to use his first longbow attack to try and pierce the tentacle and get right. it to let go. All right, let it rip. Does a 20 hit? 20 exactly hits. For four piercing. Okay, that does not quite get it to let go go. It does deal damage to it, but these, these tendrils have 10 hit points, so that thing takes 4 damage. Okay. So it about uh, halfway cuts through it, but it's not quite there yet. Solomon's gonna fire one more arrow at it. Okay. 
Do an 11. Oof. Can I use DM inspiration to re-roll that? You can, yes. Also, any, does, is anyone else... Uh, what is everyone's Chad inspiration situation? That's a crit. Woo! I burned my chat inspiration. Okay. Same. I have nothing. So did Roz. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, with that critical shot, describe that to me, but it severs the it severs the tendril. So Solomon probably pulls the arrow back, and he probably flashes back to back into the southern world where he was raised by these elves. And he probably remembers the uh, one of the uh, elder elves of the area teaching him how to shoot a bow. And he lets the arrow fly and it severs it. Yeah, excellent. And uh, you let this arrow fly and perfectly right through the middle of the... Um, Creech, uh, right through the middle of the tendril, snapping it and dropping Gyleria back to the ground. He sort of like shakes the extra vine off of her. Uh, any movement from Solomon? Uh, no. Solomon actually. Bu, 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 bu. All right. Okay, so I can get about right there. So Solomon is going to move. There. Okay. All right, Perdita, you have gotten down to try get it, try and get a shot on this thing. Yes, Perdita is going to uh, to seeing that the one vine has already been pierced, and that was the only one, right? The only. That's the only successful tendril that had attached to somebody. Yes. yes. So Perdita. On her knees, takes steady aim. Okay. And still aims for the monster underneath right. the big thing. And um, because she does that, she's giving herself advantage. And yep. she is going to shoot with the long bow, the, excuse me, the short bow again. Okay. Let her rip. Oh, it's what too marvelous. Yeah, so 27, 27 hits. To hit. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. The damage is uh, cool. 31. Is there something? Oh, wow. Can I use sneak attack? Is there something in melee? Uh, yeah, Roz thing? is in melee with it. Then also, you have advantage, so you get also you have advantage. You'd get it anyway. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. So that is 31 points of damage. <gasps> Woo! Woo! Yes. Uh, and that is a big hit. It. This thing is still alive, but uh, you see a bunch of its vines sort of like start to dangle limply uh, in the breeze through the canyon. Um, as your arrow sinks deep into the heart of this thing. It's like it, it like it doesn't make a noise other than the, just like the rustling of leaves, but it kind of like spazzes for a second and then uh, many of its vines hang limply. Uh, anything else from Perdita? Well, I don't know because if I mean, a you took steady wanted... aim, so you can't move and your bonus yeah, action was no, taken. No, that aim. is okay. fine. That is not my question. I don't know if I were like you are letting us get the new arrows to put in our bows and that is not an action. Uh -huh. But if I were going to rustle in my pack for my tinder box, that would be an action. <sighs> yeah, I think getting getting okay. something out of your bag is an action. Okay, then Perdita just stays uh, right where she is and stays crouched. Okay, uh, let's see. Gyleria is not grappled or restrained anymore. So she is going to... Take her two ranged attacks. I don't know if I only made one. No, I didn't make any because she uh, wasn't close. She had to dash. Uh, two attacks. Ooh. Holy shit! Elf Archer comes out clutch. Oh, yeah. First oh, hit nice. for tour guide. seven tour damage. Guide. Tour guide. Tour guide. <laughs> uh, second hit for. Oh, we're doing max damage on one of these. Okay. Yes. Well, she rolled max damage on Ooh, one of them, so... Nice! Yes! We'll actually uh, just take that. So that's gonna be... 22. No, no, it's 15. So she gets a d8, which is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 5 is yeah, 15. plus yeah. the 7. Plus the 7. So, oh, I was counted separately, because I already yeah. took the 7 off. Gotcha. Okay, so minus 15 more. Ooh, these things are starting to look pretty rough. 
Damn. It's time for the war horse. What do you have for us, Shanty? Shanty. Horse, Shanty. horse, 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 horse. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. I have a question. Do you big, have big Do you have armor <laughs> switching into the in. war horse like you have armor on you already, or? That's a great or question. Or is that just the icon? I don't think. I think that's just the icon. I don't, I don't think the war think horse so. would have armor. That'd be cool. I mean, it That'd is a so war cool. horse, but yeah. I don't know how you shape shift armor. Yeah. I think he's yeah. a naked boy. I think he's naked a boy. Naked horse. What happened naked to, horse. to Shanty's, uh, like, you know, quarterstaff and stuff? I mean. So the wild I shape mean, ability specifies that, that the wild shape ability specifies that the stu stuff that you choose and are wearing and holding can, like, magically morph into your form so it's, that's right morphs yeah. into True. armor or okay, a horse so theoretically <laughs> no theoretically, that's not what we, we said <laughs> oh boy how am i supposed to know if it's potato, a war horse tomato. if he's not wearing armor i mean it's just the anger in his eyes yeah and just like the the big hooves and the angry face and the, the sheer you could just be a big horse yeah that's true. Well, horse it's like a war horse as opposed to a riding horse. It's, you know, it's like the riding horse is like a dainty little riding horse, and the war horse is like a. It's like the difference between like a kicker and a linebacker. Okay, like oh, <laughs> or a kicker, is, no, no, a kicker and a lineman, right? Cute. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. kicker is like a wee little man. Have you ever That's the riding the horse. horse. The the you know the the lineman is is a is a big fucking hoss. You know, it's like a horse Amy. and a hoss. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> All I'm going to say is that I wouldn't want either to stomp on me. That is true. Yeah. No. We're, we're I good. Would. Speaking of stomping, are there any vines within stomping distance? Um, I mean, I don't think until they latch on to somebody, I don't think they become like targets for anything. So you kind of like in order to damage it, you mm. kind of have to be within within melee. Okie dokie. Uh, right, but horses, but... You, you, you horses can jump. I don't know if you want to try and try and leap over everybody. I would let you do that if you want. Oh, so she's a show horse. Listen. <laughs> well, I just thought the image of that would be cool. Also, the consequences of failure would be amazing. So, you know, it's really a win win for Pixel here. That's yeah, that's what terrifies me. But you <laughs> it would know. either be incredibly <laughs> epic or incredibly epic. <laughs> you know what? We already went big, so <laughs> so it's it. time to go home. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, friends. Uh, War Horse is absolutely oh. gonna try to jump on the lamps in the center <laughs> yeah. of the log. Okay. What am I doing? Oh yeah, you God, are. I've goaded you into some <laughs> absolute yeah. insanity. Okay, so to cross oh, the log is a DC show. 13 horse. acrobatics check. So please make an acrobatics check for the horse. Okay. All right, acrobatics check for horse. Oh, oh no. God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What, what no, are the no, no, what no. Are the, oh, no. What okay. are your stats, horse? Uh, and no. it can't be better than that. No, it has a plus one. So it has a plus same. one. So it's the yeah, same. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, um, so... So, <laughs> so Pixel, what happens to our boy? Okay, so the horse <laughs> gets up on the log <laughs> and uh -huh. immediately loses its footing. And what I need from you now <laughs> is a an athletics check, which should be much more in the strength in the, in the horse's wheelhouse. Okay, he's gone. <sighs> Go horse. What? Ooh, 17 horse, okay horse. so 17 Ooh, is horse, higher than horse. 14 so you are able to kind of like hook your horse legs over some of the vines and you're dangling 20 feet below the log kind of tangled in the vines so oh he grappled himself <laughs> well he didn't you're not grappled so these vines aren't the living okay. ones you're just in oh, some good. of the other adjacent vines just sort of like chilling out hanging a person just, would have grabbed onto these but you have hooves so you're just <laughs> so is he, he's, he's upside down uh if he wants to he be like, i don't know like it, whatever orientation you make sense to you uh okay. it, but it's you basically have like hooked your legs you know so such that they will support your weight <laughs> and you are tangled in these vines 
Do they seem to be holding okay? Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. Okay. I want to see this. I want fan art on this, please. I really do. I, oh I need to God. see it too. I need like a flip book of every of all of this. Wolf, are you there? <laughs> please, please, Black Moon, uh, somebody. I think Warhorse wants to just wiggle a little bit <laughs> and just see what wiggle, happens. Just wiggle. Oh, Jesus. Just wiggle uh, a little. Our, and, and see just, just what happens if we're swinging. <laughs> swinging? I mean, I think a little wiggle. Yeah, I think you just sort of like gently swing kind of like a hammock, just sort of like back and forth. I mean, you're not like kicking like you're trying to like pull the vines down. Like you're you, a, a little wiggle is what was described to me. And I think that would achieve a little bit of lateral motion. Is there anything else hanging down in front of the war horse? Any other vines? Um... I mean, there's, like, the whole underside of this thing is kind of covered in vines. It's just that there's a mass of tighter, denser vines that are moving in the middle of it all. Okay. Uh, can Warhorse grab any of them with his teeth? Grab them with his teeth. Okay. Well, first of all, let's move Warhorse. Oh, uh, right. I'm going to say that Warhorse, because you went to go to jump... Let I, yeah, I'm gonna say we can get you. We can get you in melee with this thing if you want to try to bite the vines. I think that's I, fine. I would like to try to bite the vines. Okay, <laughs> great. And I'm gonna give you advantage for being down here next to <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. Thanks. So go ahead. Uh, also, you have inspiration now, Shanti. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Uh, what kind of Let's see. Uh, what do you want me to do for a bite? Okay, so uh, I'll give you the same attack bonus, plus six, and we'll just do... Your hooves are probably nastier than your bite, so we'll do 1d6 plus four. So I'll just add... Hang on, I got you. Bite. Boom. It is a melee weapon attack with a five-foot reach. It's got a plus six to reach, one target, 1d6 uh, bludgeoning, because you have very flat teeth. Bam. Okay, you might have to close and refresh your sheet there, but now you have a bite attack. Fantastic. Oh, it's 1d6 plus strength, plus 4. Sorry. 1d6 plus 4? Yeah, there you go. All right, All right so that's the bite now. attack. So plus 6 to hit, 1d6 plus 4 damage. That seems fair to me for a horse. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Uh, do 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 do. A horse, of course. Got a nineteen to Oof. bite. Twenty's the AC. But, but uh, I did give you advantage for being down it. there. So if you want to roll said again, she had advantage though. Yeah. So if you want to oh, roll again, true. I got a twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god! I scared my cat. There it is. <laughs> Rip my poor cat. I'm sorry. Sorry, kitty. All right. Cool. And then go ahead and roll my damage on the bitey bitey vines. Four seven damage to the vines. Okay. Ooh. Oof. The vines are looking extremely, extremely rough as these horse teeth, which are designed to munch plants, <laughs> <laughs> munch plants. Hell yeah. It is, uh, you chew through several vines, sort of like hanging on, swaying. <laughs> 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 I think that will be my turn. Okay, and horse. that brings or us to Silas. Okay, does it seem like if we, like, doing fire damage does extra damage to this thing? Because it's um, vines? <clears throat> so far, you have not noticed that, no. Okay, and does it seem like if we catch something on fire, I might break the vines that are holding Warhorse up? It depends on how big of a boom you throw over there. Like if well, if I'm going the, for a big boom. If the if the horse is in though vines that get boomed, probably yeah. If not, I don't know, maybe. Okay. Do you have that template for fireball? Uh yeah. Also, uh someone Oh no, I'm hallucinating. Okay. Uh template for fireball. That's not what I want. Oop. Oop. That's a fireball. 
And the monster is this square? Am I seeing the that The monster correctly? is... Oh, you guys may not be able to see that. Hang on. I'm a dummy. It's a little hard to There you tell. go. That's like where the monster is. I should have okay. put that up from the, from the get-go. Okay. Put the... Um, put the template... Um, All right. You have control over the template. Essentially right here. Okay. I don't want it anywhere near Roz or Warhorse. Okay. All and right. Yeah, I'm casting Fireball. Okay. That'll be... So that's a oh, four shit. on the deck save. <laughs> so it's what? 8d6? Oh, shit. Yeah. Yep. A lot of luck. 29 points of damage. So you blast... Yeah. Uh, you blast a fireball into this thing. These vines shrivel and die, and most of them begin to fall down into the ravine. Also, uh, the log catches on fire, and um, I think we're going to return as the log catches fire, which I need to basically put something on so that I remember that for the future. Uh, the log kind of catches fire in this area um, a little bit, <clears throat> and I think uh, the war horse's vines are somewhat precarious, especially if the log burns all the way through. You are out of initiative, however, you are out of the frying pan and into the fire, as you've got to find some way to cross this log and get across the ravine before it falls in completely, and my friends... That is where we are going to leave this episode of The Regent of Medigar. Wow, that was a... Uh, Hot stuff. That was a pretty interesting <laughs> little situation our heroes have gotten themselves into. Um, great, well, we are going to do our usual sign-off here, folks. Uh, reminding everybody who we are, who we have played tonight. We are going to go looking for someone to raid in the meantime... Uh, but uh, if you would start by introducing yourself, uh, Bonus Mom. <clears throat> well, I am Bonus Mom, and I played Tabaxi Rogue Perdita, and possibly the only person here in this clearing that had any sense at all, but... Excellent. Uh, Kyla. Hey, pals. Uh, my name is Kyla, and I have been playing Shanty this evening, who is our uh, uh, bard and druid and uh, warhorse. And I had a lot of fun hanging out with you. I give, Oh, I'm on the internet in most places as Kai2D2. Huzzah. Um, Solomon. I mean, Daniel, you're a human and not a character. Shit, I did it again. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Daniel. I can be found in the Bonus Mom Tavern as that one ball rock. I changed my name. Yeah, but anyways... This is your fightness, fightness paladin, and I'm coming for that dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Beast. Hey, folks, I'm Beast, and I played Roz Heathkers, the Tabaxi Valor Bard. You can find me on Bonus Mom's Tavern as Beast Bonus Bud, and I uh, have been recruiting and testing. Uh, a warfare scenario set in my personal fantasy campaign setting, The Beast Wilds. And it's been going really well. And uh, I have a few folks who are interested in commanding armies. Uh, and if that sounds like you, you should come to the Discord and let me know that so that we can get you involved in the games when we start streaming. So look out for that. Excellent. Jesse. Hey, I'm Jesse. I am everywhere all at once, or whatever the name of that movie is. Uh, you can find me at a few different places on the internet. Uh, they're probably in some description somewhere. Uh, over at YMBA, we just passed 10,000 subscribers! Wee! That was pretty cool. Uh, today, actually, so that's <clears throat> super exciting. Oh, um, what else? Um, let's see. Um, I'm currently setting things on fire, apparently, as Silas, the... Uh, as Silas the guy, and uh, yeah, I'm just excited for two weeks from now when we can finish this up. Excellent. And uh, Taylor. Hi, friends. I'm Taylor. I played Enna, the Wood Elf Cleric. He is definitely coming after that dragon ass. Let's have a dragon for dinner. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, mm, 
Wow, I just really I'm I guess I'm just done for the day. Okay. <laughs> Bye, love you. Oh, what I was gonna say was um I might join uh, Bonus Moms Discord with that fun little shenanigans they got going on. So if you do see me, do I'm it. usually on the internet as Tater. So if you see that name, that's me. Okay, bye. Excellent. And as always, I have been Pixel. Um, you can find me here, running games at uh, Ages of Ignore. Next week will be Curse of Strahd, where our heroes... Golly gee, what are they doing? Uh, wander into the woods looking for a missing wizard, I believe is what they're up to. Um, very exciting stuff. And, um, then we'll be back here in two weeks with the, uh, exciting conflict with, uh, Dragon Daddy, whom everyone hates and who looks like Ben Shapiro. So <laughs> great times. Uh, and you can also find me, hopefully here we'll be doing some warfare streams, other campaigns are maybe in the works. I know we've said that a few times, but we'll see. I think, I think maybe we have a beat on some stuff that might actually be coming through this time. And who knows? Uh, other than that, you can find me here at twitch.tv slash hammer and pixel where I stream games. We've been doing a lot of Minecraft. Uh, we might do some other stuff here. I don't know. Um, we've been playing so much Minecraft lately that, uh, I might take a break from that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I actually don't think there's anyone really live to go raid tonight. Uh, so I think we're just going to call it a stream there, folks. Thank you all so much for hanging out, and uh, we will see you next time. Peace out. Let me tell a tale of a world where heroes walk among us, fighting through the darkness left by monsters and by selfish men a tale of glory rents us under sacrifice and battles lost our heroes know not what awaits them and still they carry Let me sing a song of a family forged by trust.